This is module three of a course called Coding for Crosswords. For information on the whole course, please see the links below. In this module, we're gonna start coding. Our goal is to write a program and compile it and run it that adds one plus one. So that sounds easy, but we'll go through a few things to discuss along the way. So I hope you'll find it interesting. So you'll need an environment like this, where you have a place to enter code. In my case, this is a window on a Linux machine. In your case, it could be Windows, it could be Macintosh, it could be a browser window. And all of those options are discussed in the previous modules if you need to go back to review. But you should have some place where you can type code in. And then another window, in my case, where I get to compile the code and run the code. So in the editor window, my editor of choice is Vim, which is a very simple editor, but one that is tried and true. You may use any editor you want, uh, including just a text editor on a Windows box or an editor that's part of an integrated development environment uh, like CodeBlocks. So in my case, I'm going to open a file and I call my file a.c, a just because it's simple. And I do .c because it's a little unusual. Most people would call C++ code .cc, but I just find it a little bit annoying to type the extra letter, so I just do .c and that's fine. And this is where we're gonna start. And I want to tell the computer to add one plus one. So that's our goal. So how do we do that? So computer, please add one plus one. Okay, that's my first attempt at the program. So that's our first challenge. Go ahead and try that. Type in some text like that on your editor and run the compiler. And let's see what happens. What do you think is gonna happen? How's the computer gonna handle this? In my case, let's try it. And my compiler on this machine is G++. That's the C compiler that I like to use. And the input file is this A.C. And then I have an output file, I'll call it A, again, just to keep it simple. So that's what I run. And you can see it says error. Computer does not name a type. So it thinks it's trying to interpret this in a different way. So of course, we don't need to be so polite to a computer. We're not in the Star Trek era yet. So let's go back and modify this for something more reasonable. We know that we don't need to address the computer. We don't need that we don't need to be so polite. And Instead of one plus one, we can put in the actual symbols, one, and we can use an operator, right? So this obviously looks like something more close to what the computer would be able to work with. So let's compile that one and let's see what happens. And it still doesn't like this one just hanging out here by itself. So how do we fix that? Well, all computer languages need some place to start. They need some instruction about where to begin executing all these instructions you want to give it. And in C++, that is done with this keyword called main. And what that means is that your code is organized into functions, many functions that are just groups of code that, that do things. And there's a special function that you call main that it looks for, and you need to have exactly one in every program. So we put a main in our program. Now the computer knows where to start. So now we can try it and you'll see what happens. It says main does not name a type. It still is confused what main is. So one more wrinkle is that we need to give each function inputs. A function generally takes in inputs and then produces an output. And the way you tell the inputs is in these parentheses like this. So you put your inputs in here, X, Y, Z, whatever you're gonna put in there, you stick in there. Now our first program doesn't have any inputs, so we're gonna leave it blank. Okay, let's try this. Okay, it's still confused about this one hanging out here. And that's because in C++, you need to group things. Everything after this main, it needs to know if you have a lot of statements down here, it needs to know when does it stop. So the way C++ does that, and a lot of other languages do too, they copied the original languages, is with these braces. So a brace groups things together. It says these things all belong to main. Everything within these braces belongs to main. I could put some other thing down here, foo, 
and it would be another function that would not belong to main. But for now, we're going to stick with this stuff. So that's going to be closer to what will work to add one plus one. So let's try that. And you can see what we get here. Now it's getting closer. It says expected semicolon before the closing brace. Now, what does that mean? C++ is a language where the statements are terminated with a semicolon. Now, some languages like Python are line terminated. You would put one command, um, you know, one command would be per line. Next command would be next line. Now, C++ though, has a semicolon, so you can put it there. And what's interesting is that it's also, doesn't matter what spaces you put in. C++ doesn't care if you've got spaces. That's the same thing as having it all in one line. But most people put it on one line just to be nice and have it look, look a little bit more friendly. And there's an indentation that's also optional. The compiler doesn't care, but humans like to read things indented like this. So uh, most people indent the code. So let's try that and let's see how, how close we are. Aha, now we're saying ICC, ISO C++ forbids declaration of main with no type. So we've given it the inputs, we've said no inputs, but now we need to also tell it what type of output it returns. Every function can return one output. And there's a special keyword in C++ called int that means it's returning an integer. So it could be returning also a floating point number or it could be returning a string or things like that, or, or another data object. But int is what main always has to return. So we just have to return an int. So we say int there, and then we run again. Okay, so now it compiles. Great, so now let's run it. And on this platform, I type A to run it, and nothing happens. So this is an interesting situation. It's like the tree fell in the forest and nobody heard it. You know, did the one plus one happen and we just don't know about it? Or did it not even happen at all? We don't know because we didn't print anything. So what we want to do is write something in here that will print the result of the one plus one, not just do the operation. Because in fact, what happens is the compiler is smart enough. It actually knows that since nobody's looking for the result of this thing, it actually prunes it out. So in fact, the one plus one never even happened in our example, even though we coded it there because nobody needed that output. So we have to print it. So let me bring up the browser window here and show you a good resource. The web has just a ton of information about programming. As long as you know where to look, so let's just try this one. Let's say, how do I print in C++? Or how do I print something? That'd be fine too. How do I print something C++? And there'll be a ton of results. Um, Stack Overflow always has information on everything, but sometimes the questions and answers can get kind of hard to read. They get into the details. People are flaming each other about exactly not answering a question. So that can be okay, but almost maybe more for an expert level. W3 schools is great, so let's try that one. That's just gonna give you some basic information. So here you go, C++ output, how to print text. Now here's what they say. They say you should have something like this. Now look, it looks kind of like our program, right? You can see the int main, the function with no inputs and then the braces, but then what's this thing? C out. So C out is um, a shorthand for the console out, I think is what the C stands for. And it's the way, if you and if you sort of shove a string at C out with this redirect operator, it will cause it to print. So um, let's try that. But before we go back to our coding window, let's also look and see, since C out's not part of the absolute standard C++, you have to include this other library called IO stream. So let's try that. So let's go back to the coding window and let's put in our include file that just says, add in some extra features that aren't part of the normal C++. And you're gonna to have to do this a lot for different sorts of features like math packages or, or different kinds of capabilities that you wanna to add to the main C++. So typically a real program will have, you know, even 10 or 100 of these include statements. So you're gonna include IO stream, and then you're going to down here, we're gonna say C out, it's gonna get this thing one plus one. So we're gonna take the one plus one and we're gonna sort of shove it into C out. 
So let's try to compile that. And I'll show you what happens. So now it says C out was not declared in this scope. Did you mean standard C out? So here's the thing is that some of these libraries like IOStream define these new capabilities like C out, but they don't let you have them at the top level. They make you prefix them with this thing called standard STD. So you could access this with STD colon C out. So a lot of professional programmers, most professional programmers would prefer this style. For just learning how to program, I'm glad the W3 schools does this. Um, you can just do this shorthand where it will always look into standard STD for anything that it can't find. That's what this using namespace does. It's a bit of a hack, but it's actually quite convenient. And it really doesn't cause many bugs because nobody's gonna name a variable called C out usually. It's such a standard name that the, 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 the chance of confusion is actually very low doing this. So I embrace it, especially for any kind of coding that's recreational. You might have a difference of opinion when you get to a professional coding environment like um, Google, for example, would not let you use this blanket statement. Um, so here we go. So now we can run this. Now it should be able to find what the C out is. So let's compile that. And sure enough, it compiled. So let's run it. And there it is. And there's our two. Do you see it? It kind of got hidden in here. Now, why did it get hidden in there? It's because there was no line feed. C++ is very literal. It will just print exactly what you tell it. If you want a line feed, you need to put in the line feed character. And that's a new line, which looks like this. And this will actually work on all platforms. So um, if it's Windows or Linux, this will do the proper thing because there's, there's a little bit difference in the way they do line feeds. So if we run that, that that's a strange character. That's a backslash. Um, it's not a forward slash. And it has to be in these quotes. So for now, just take it that that's the way it has to be. And let's see what that does. Whoops, uh, G plus plus. So I compile that thing and then I run it and it says two. Okay, I have a couple of comments on style, coding style. It's quite religious. Some people really believe in certain appearance to the code versus others. And here's one example, these braces, uh, many people like to code this way, where the braces are lined up. Um, they think that looks right. Some people even like to have the return type here and then the name of the function and then the and then these. Um, I kind of prefer this dangling style uh, just because it saves vertical space and I got used to that with the Google coding style. Another big difference, which you can look at the HBO Silicon Valley episode for, <laughs> is whether you use spaces or tabs to indent this code. Now, I use two spaces. I used to be a tabber, but um, after Google for 11 years, I got used to spaces, and actually, I kind of like spaces better now. But this could also be a tab, which would be up to eight spaces. So that this code might look like this. To me, that looks too uh, spread out horizontally now that I've seen code that's, that's like this more often. Because you do get, you start to get code that will, that will go in multiple levels as we get to more complicated programs. Um, so it's funny that like a lot of things in humanity, there seems to be two divisions of things. Um, you'll even have a division that's sort of like sectarian division within the tabber group. You're going to have people who like to tab at two spaces or four spaces or eight spaces. So you don't even have agreement within the religion of tabbers exactly what's the right way to do it. Um, so I just find that, um... I just find that kind of amusing. There will be a lot of these type of coding styles that I'll highlight as I go. And I'll try to indicate where my coding style is normal and where my coding style tends to be not normal because there's a few things that I do that are just my personal style that I like, that I have a reason for, but that you should know aren't standard. But mostly I code pretty standard uh, Google. Another one is the name of, 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 of variables. And we'll get into that in the next, um, in the next few lectures. Um, okay, let's talk about comments. How are you going to add a comment to this code? Comments in C++ you can put with a slash slash like this. So you can say, this is my first program. Okay, now that doesn't do anything. When you compile this thing, it will still compile no problem. So you can put whatever you want here. It's not gonna be even looking at this. This is total garbage, right? This will compile just fine. 
Um, most people do multi-line comments like this. You, know, you could say, you know, item one, this is item two, you know, note, look out, this is a bad function or something below. It's really important to put in comments when you're writing code that help the user understand the meta context of the code. Now you don't really wanna do comments like this. Uh, you know, add uh, one plus one because it's obvious in the code. So comments really don't help if they're just repeating what the code is doing. But what comments can help, um, the cases in which comments can help are when uh, you can talk about some of the issues of, of how you want to use that code and what you've designed that code to do or not to do. So comments are very important and you'll see that I put a lot of comments in my code as we work through, as we work through this course. Challenge, let's have you write a program in your own editor and compile it that multiplies three times four. Give that a try. And let's see what you did. Now you should have a three in there and you should have a four in there. The question is, what do you put in the middle? Do you put an X? If you put an X for multiply, it's going to be confused because X to a compiler looks like a variable name. It looks like a variable called X and it doesn't know what X is. You haven't declared an X. So the symbol for multiply in C++ is this asterisk. So that will give you 12 if I did it right. So you have created your first program. You've learned what main is. You've learned a little bit about functions. You've learned how to make a statement terminate it with a semicolon, how to include a resource file like iostream so you can do something like write to the output, um, and then maybe even how to debug a little bit when you type something that doesn't work, and the compiler gives you some error messages. So with that, we'll wrap this episode, and we will start in module four doing some more things.